Nearly two decades ago, armed with my file and my theory in the wake of my father's brutal murder, I gave up my career in commercial law to try to make my country a safer place. Unbeknownst to me at the time, this would involve a life journey into national and more recently global advocacy, which in turn has led me to meeting and visiting some of the most remarkable people and places in the world, today being no exception. My first virtual presentation with an audience much more diverse, widespread and global than ever before. Good morning, good day, and for some, good evening. My name is Vanessa Lynch, and I'm the founder of The DNA Project. And today I'm going to share with you my story, which some may refer to as one of a victim advocate, but I prefer to tell it as one of a crusader, a DNA crusader, if you must. Victim advocate, crusader, civil society activist, call it what you will. Being an activist for civil society requires you to be passionate about the things that matter to you. And the issue that I'm passionate about is fighting crime with science, in particular DNA. And I'm pretty sure that most of you who have joined us today share this passion for DNA in some form or another. And whilst many of the challenges I have faced and continue to face in my own country may not be prevalent in your own, I'm also pretty sure that there are other issues. As we have seen from many of the hashtag movements recently, global issues matter everywhere and affect people differently. My own country, South Africa, affectionately known as the Rainbow Nation, lies on the tip of the continent of Africa. And whilst hailed as truly one of the most beautiful and diverse places in the world, it is also one of the ugliest. Gender-based violence, whilst on the decrease, is still rife. And we have earned the undesirable reputation of being the rape capital of the world. On average, 58 people are murdered daily. And we also have one of the highest reoffending rates. And it's not just South Africa that is affected by violent crime. Many countries across the world face similar problems. But these are problems we hear of in the news that don't affect us. This makes it easier for us to observe them and turn away. But when my father was murdered, I could no longer be just an observer. I could no longer turn away. And so began my first crusade in 2004, when my father's case was closed due to a lack of evidence, and I realized that my father's slayers had literally gotten away with murder. Members of the public cleaned up the crime scene before the crime scene investigators arrived. Police and forensic pathologists threw away valuable DNA evidence, which may have identified the perpetrators. And there was generally a lack of knowledge at the time as to the value of DNA evidence in proving accountability. Accepting my father's murderers would never be brought to book was one of the hardest things I have ever done. And in an effort to ensure that this did not happen to more families, I started the DNA Project, a non-profit organization set up to help combat violent crime in my country. Over the years, my organization, consisting of no more than 10 incredibly passionate crusaders, has changed national policy and succeeded in lobbying government to pass DNA-specific laws which now regulate the National DNA Database and mandate that DNA is collected from arrestees as well as convicted offenders. Since that time, we have seen violent offenders linked up to as many as 30 crimes from hits on the DNA database. We've embarked on a national crime scene awareness campaign and aided the development of forensic DNA degrees in both science and law. And these are just a few of the reasons why the DNA project has been lauded as a pioneer in lobbying for forensic DNA advancements in South Africa. The second initiative, based on the successes of the first, is today a global movement to aid other countries in Africa develop and expand their DNA outreach programs to help resolve crime. This new nonprofit, aptly named the DNA Project Africa, takes lessons learned in South Africa to other African leaders and stakeholders, as well as to victim advocates, to help identify more efficient and holistic approaches to use DNA profiling for crime scene investigation, as well as help progress DNA laws, DNA databases, skills and infrastructures within their own criminal justice systems. Today, I would like to share with you a little about these two programs. And in the context of the time we have together today, I have broken this down into what I call six lessons, which I believe translate into ways to use the power of victim advocacy to help build a DNA database. There may be many more ways to do that, but these are the ones that work for me. And I hope by sharing them with you today that these lessons may inspire you to do the same. The first lesson is the most important factor influencing the potential effect of DNA in any criminal justice system, and that is to look at what your, what your laws allow you to do with it. Without enabling DNA legislation, you cannot build a DNA database. 
DNA being used on a case-by-case basis simply does not harness this incredible power this this technology has to offer. By passing laws which mandate the collection of as many DNA samples from as many different categories of people as legally possible in order to grow a national DNA database, you are not only able to identify criminals at a much earlier stage of their criminal career, but you save lives by preventing them from striking again. Looking globally, every administration which has used DNA profiling in conjunction with a DNA database has done so because the laws have allowed them to do so. If you don't have DNA laws in your country, it's time to start lobbying for them now. And if you do have laws, you need to ensure that they contribute to the growth of your database by including as as many profiles as possible. Flattening the curve is not the aim of this critical objective. But laws alone do not affect change, and this brings me to my second lesson, crime scene awareness. You may have the best DNA laws in place, the smartest scientists working in the most advanced DNA labs. But if at ground level your crime scene investigators are unable to secure a crime scene, in order to properly collect the DNA evidence, you will never get off the starting blocks. This is why one of our project's main aims was to raise awareness around the importance of crime scene preservation, and we achieved this under our DNA awareness campaign. We raised funds in order to provide free workshops to a variety of first-on crime scene responders, as well as the general public. Our trainers were highly skilled, our material was simple yet effective, and our reach was national. We then tackled skills and education. When the project was first started, there was no specific degree for forensic DNA analysis in either law or or science at any university in South Africa. We worked together with government stakeholders and leading academics from around the country to develop postgraduate qualifications at honours and master's level in both science and law, which degrees are both available at several universities throughout South Africa. The fourth insight I wish to share with you is a reminder that in seeking to convict with DNA, one must never forget the power of DNA as exculpatory evidence to protect the innocent. In fact, the innocent need to be protected more than the guilty. DNA is proving to be one of the most valuable tools in helping to exonerate innocent people today. To this end, we lobbied to ensure that our DNA laws included a provision which allows applicants access to the crime scene sample information on file for exoneration purposes without having to apply to court to reopen the case. We also worked closely with the Innocence Project of South Africa, as well as the Forensic Science Laboratory, where DNA evidence could be used to help with exoneration cases. The DNA Project sets out to educate the public never to interfere with the crime scene. The message was clear, never disturb a crime scene. The fifth lesson is what I like to call innovative interventions, to generate support and awareness around the value of DNA to fight crime. And the video you've just seen is exactly that. And to do this, you need to ensure that you have a good cross-section of society on your side. And what better platform than social media to do this? Social media has the immense power to bring together diverse and diametrically opposed points of view, which helps bring legitimacy to your campaign. We engage with victims, human rights activists, social influencers, policymakers, as well as a range of professionals to achieve this. We also managed to produce three hard-hitting edgy TV adverts and secured over six million rands worth of free advertising on national television. And what we learned through this lesson is that crime is not discriminating. It affects everyone, no matter who you are. The devastation we felt as a family over the loss of my father had no social boundaries and cuts as deep whether you are a cultural icon, an ordinary citizen, a politician or an activist. My final lesson is oversight. Every system requires balance. And an oversight body with representatives from both the public and private sector to monitor and regulate a DNA database strengthens political accountability. This holds promise for civil society that human rights concerns will be safeguarded and it prevents political deviations from the founding principles of the DNA laws. But there will always be challenges and we have suffered some crushing setbacks. The Forensic Science Laboratory have recently lost the funding promised to it on passing the laws, resulting in a shortage of necessary DNA consumables and sampling kits. 
which has caused a rapid decline in the growth of our database. Convicted offender sampling has also been stalled whilst our police minister tries to push for a population database. But despite these and other challenges, the groundwork is in place and the impact of the DNA database on crime resolution has been significant. When I first started my project in 2004, the Forensic Science Laboratory held about 35,000 profiles on an Excel spreadsheet. Since passing the law in 2015, this number has grown exponentially to well over 1 million profiles on the DNA database today and with as many as 64,000 hits. Sixteen years ago, I took a giant leap of faith into the unknown world of forensic DNA, crime fighting and victim advocacy. And along the way, I've created social movements that have contributed to making my country safer and will continue to have an impact on crime beyond the borders of South Africa. So can the collective voice of victim advocates really make a big difference? Can civil society influence and shape national or even global policy? Yes, I believe it can. When I first started this crusade, my mother told me I was farting against thunder, and perhaps I was at first. But so strong was my conviction in the belief of DNA to reduce violent crime that I leaned into it head first. No matter what the challenges that face you in your society, and no matter how hard the fight to overcome them, I believe that all of us has within us the power to change the world. So if you want to change the society in which you live, or perhaps even the world, I urge you to campaign for whatever it is that matters most to you. Your community, our world, needs more DNA crusaders. And I share these lessons today in the hope that maybe some of you out there may be motivated to connect with each other and join forces so that we can fight crime together. Just as DNA is the blueprint of life, so civil society, you, are the key to the blueprint for change. Thank you.